Hello, my name is Anthony. Welcome to this session that discusses the new Batch and Leaks dashboard, which is available in 25.10 in all the Oracle Utilities Cloud services. In this session, we'll talk about this new feature and how it can impact your business. I will give you an overview of the Batch and Leaks dashboard, followed by more detail to explain how you would use it and the benefits to your business. Then I'll walk you through a brief demonstration. Finally, I will explain what you need to consider when implementing this product in your business and outlines where you can get additional advice. In past releases, we introduced a new batch run portal and a batch day dashboard to look at data tactically to cover individual batch runs and a summary of executions across a specific business day. In this release, we're introducing a new set of batch analytic portals to focus on batch from a strategic point of view. The flexible set of portals covers three important areas. Batch job analytics, which is a high level analytics focused on the analysis at the job level for a specific batch process over a specific period, which includes analysis of elapsed time, volume, and submission type. It also links to the batch run portal to provide links for additional information. The second is a batch thread analytics. Lower level analytics at the thread level for selected batch processes over a specific time period, including analysis of elapsed time, reliability, volume differentials, retry logic, and advanced analysis for detecting data skew. And lastly, batch workload analytics, which has thread pool analysis for a specific date to focus on analytics on workload to understand the peaks and troughs of workload using various dimensions. The different metrics for analysis for each portal are shown here. Now let's look at the batch analytics dashboard. Welcome to the demonstration of the batch analytics dashboard. Now when you get into the dashboard, the first thing you'll come to is a search dialog. Now search dialog is used to determine which data and which time period you're interested in to analyze. The first thing I want to point out and I will point out this also in the implementation advice section, is that the, all the analytics that I'm showing you today, all the features, run off what's called snapshots. And those snapshots need to be populated, and to do that, there's a snapshot summary at the top, and you can see what the, the current snapshot is as of this recording. And you can see, if you want to know what this date means, you click on the help, and it says this is the latest business date, if your data is stale, please run this batch job. Now you run these batch jobs regularly to up, make sure that the data in your snapshot is up to date. Now a snapshot is used for analytics purposes because it does all these calculations for you uh, inside the snapshot itself so that it saves performance when you're actually doing analytics. Now the focus of these searches here are for you to determine which records you wish to analyze. Okay, so the, the searches help you at, uh, detect the data you want to. So in the case of the job analytics, it's which job. So the first thing you need to do, and you need to always provide, is the, the range of data within the snapshot you want to analyze. Now we have some pre-built ranges for you. So if you want to look at the last 30 days, if you want to look at the last one, eight, last uh, month, last three months, so four and six months, sorry, and last week, you can also put a custom one in to put your date ranges in. So I'm going to take the last 90 days. Now, these other are optional and you can refine. refined. So if you want to look at things that were generated, uh, submitted online the last 90 days, you want to look at what's complete in the last 30 days or what's an error or even what type of job it is, whether it's a, a monitor job or it's an ILM job or it's a conversion job or a perch job, you can do that refinement here. But for the purposes of this demonstration, I'm going to just use the last 90 days. So you click on the search and it gives you a list of the jobs as well as the number of runs in that period that are, alleged, that are in the snapshot. Okay, so then what you need to do is select the records that you're interested in. So I'm going to pick one with some data in it. In this case, it's a CMA job, right? It's a monitor job, it's got 103. So I select the job. This will then load the dashboards in and do the analytics for you. Now, a couple of things that you need to understand is it's loading the analytics one by one. And so up the top here, you'll see the filters that you selected at inside your search. So you can see it's the job I'm interested in and the start and date periods I'm looking at, which is two months and 28 days, which is 90 days effectively. So I can see this is the each, the, each tab gives you information. So I can see, uh, for example, in that period, 
that 99% were complete, which is 102 jobs, and one was an error, right? I'll show you how you can find out which ones are as you go through. So I can see during this period also they're online and generated. I should point out to you that the colors are standardized. So every time you see online, you'll see this color. When you see generated, you'll see this color. When you're looking at job submission, and same with the status, you'll see these colors. So it's it's defined once and then we reuse it. So I can now see from this point of view my lapse time and so if my job volumes, the fluctuations in that period. You can see there's quite a lot of fluctuations. I can then look at the history of the job in that period, clicking on the history tab. Again, it's loading up all the data and analyzing it for you. So in this case, I can see all the different runs and you can see some, some of the graphs have reference lines to give you. In this case, this reference line here is what's called a confidence interval. In this case, I've got an outlier here. See the job's running reasonable, but at these two times it ran over. I can also see the history in terms of the volumes of data and you can see Generally, it's above average, the, the data, sometimes below average, it's climbing up and it's getting closer and closer to that to that confidence interval, which means it's unusual number of volume of records. And you can see the run times, uh, the, the run periods here. I can see the submission statistics from the analytics. So I can see when it was submitted and how it was submitted. Just let it load. And I can see here it was kick, kicked off over time. So you can see here the submission by day of the week. You can see that. You can also see the number of users. And you can toggle between the data as well as the graphs, as you can see here. It's a standard feature. And in the uh, when you go into the data, you can export that to um, CSV file and load into Excel if you wish and do some further analysis if you wish. Now, uh, in the job analytics, we have something different called details. So if you want to look at the details of each of the jobs, so the jobs in that in that selection I picked up, I can see every job, every execution from the earliest to the latest. I can see who submitted it, what submission method they used, the business date and the status. By the way, these badges are also colored in the same colors as the, the graphs to give you an idea. So I can go into the batch run tree for the arid one and find out more information. So that is the batch job analytics dashboard. The other dashboard to pick is the, the thread one. So if I go into thread, again, there's a date range. And I can pick the last 90 days. I can also limit it to multi-threaded jobs only. So for, if a, for thread analysis, the best analysis is to use multi-threaded. So I can say only give me multi-threaded jobs only that ran. So a, a job that ran in that period more than one with more than one thread. And as you can see, again, it gave me a summary. And it's a, a smaller list because obviously multi-thread jobs in this environment aren't that many. And I can see the number of runs in that period. And also the maximum thread limit I set up. So I can see here someone put in 50 threads at one stage. It's the maximum thread limit I've used. So again, I'm going to pick just the, the fact the, snap, the snapshot jobs themselves and pick one off the list. Now here we've got a lot more analysis because it's thread level. Uh, and same sort of idea. We've got a, a filter at the top giving you what your selection is. And then we have the, the graphs. So you can see we have the graphs here. And again, it's it's got a thread status of complete. So 100% of the threads completed. And that which translates to a high reliability, right? Because 100 threads. So this is a new statistic called reliability. And again, you can read the information about the reliability here. And then here it tells me during that period, the last 190 days, these are different runs that ran. I can see that the thread limit I specified each time I ran it to give you an idea. So let's look at a couple of other tabs. So this is a new tab for reliability. And again, you can see obviously the threads all finished. So it's a high reliability. You can see each run. And again, different colors and the size of the graph will give you whether how reliable the jobs are so if there's job failure uh, thread failures you'll see them listed on here in this case it's there's all the threads were high and in fact all the information here you can see there's no threads in error and there's no error rate so the success rate is hundred percent in this case but if you had some poor runs you can see them and you can go in to see what that run was why it was poor what was the error for example so let's look at the next one this is th thread differentials so if a job starts late or ends late, it's a non-zero differential because the difference between the, the earliest thread start and the latest thread start, the latest thread finish and the, and the earliest thread finish. 
So you can see generally if you have it down here at zeros, it's good. But when you start seeing curves like this, you can't you see that in case both threads here started early and late. If, they, if a thread starts late, it usually means it's a capacity issue you've got to worry about. So you're running too many workload and we'll talk about workload in other analytics. And here uh, they're ending late as well. That could be data skew. And I can also see the volume differential. So zero is like the average volume you should have across these threads. And if you have a uh, high thread differentials, it means you some threads actually process more records than others. And if it's low threads, you had records processing less. Generally, you want to have this kind of line, but you can see this differential and the volume fluctuations you can see in your in your thread executions. Now, this graph might appear blank and is blank, but that's important because every time a thread restarts, we register that in the analytics. And in this case, none of the threads restarted. So actually, it's, it's good to see this. But if you had thread restarts, you can see that. And you can click on the graph, and it will tell you in a detail zone which threads restarted. And then you can go click on those to find out more information about why it restarted. Zero processing threads are also analyzed. And in this case, if a thread has no records to process or a number of threads, have, they are marked as zero processing threads. As you can see, generally we had pro threads were processing data. But in this case, three threads actually had zero processing. And again, you can click on the, on the information and it gives you the detail of which threads had no data. As you can see, they had no time, almost no time they completed. Now, if you have too many threads with no data and, and on a regular basis, that means you must re-examine your threading to see whether you need to re-optimize it to balance your threading out. But zero threads usually means it's starting the job and then ending because it's got no data, no, nothing to process. And you don't want to have too many of those in your, in your execution. The last analysis is quite complex, and I won't cover it in this session, but this is using interquartile range, quartile range analysis, and the documentation explains it. So here we've got the upper interquartile executions, the lower executions, and also just the difference between the quartiles. The idea of this is to try to look at variation in your threading. If you have no variation, you'll have straight lines. If not, you'll have these curves going through showing that certain data is taking longer or certain processes are taking longer to process and that's something you need to examine if you want to keep your balancing of your of your threading. The last analytics is the workload analytics. Now workload analytics is around a thread pool and a specific date because there's lots of data that you have to analyze. It, it only makes sense really to look at a certain date and a certain thread pool. So most of your thread pools are, are using default and you want to see how busy they are to see whether you need to increase your, your capacity. So it's a capacity. So you can get the date range of the thread pool. Again, you can refine. So again, let's go right date range. Look at the last 90 days and I can select on it. This is a development environment. So there's a lot of funny names for these. And I can just pick one date out of it. And it will again give me some analysis. Okay. So in this case, um, this is a development environment. So it's not really that busy. But I can see nothing was running during these periods and this is every two minutes of the day just to give you enough information so you can see the number of threads running at any point in time in those two minutes you can see that it's had two periods of actually some some executions and then fad is off and then you can actually suppress all the zeros just to get the 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 data that you need to see so i'm just looking at the period where it's actually busy and i can go in and see it more detailed if i want to and i can click on any period and find out what was running during that period so I can see if it's busy, too busy, I can I can see that information. Next thing is then you want to see a summary of that information. This takes the day and the, and the workload and calculates what was working in that period based on two different dimensions. One is category. In this case, 100% of my workload in development was extracts, right? Again, the colors are standardized. And the, the where it's coming from is my workload and that that whole day was coming from online rather than an other other means it came from another location rather than running from online there are other different methods that are used and obviously these are the two that used in development now if the minutes is too detailed for you and you just want to report to management for example on hours of the day we have a, an hour range analysis as well 
Uh, it doesn't give you detail, but it gives you enough information to see whether which hours of the day are busy. So I can see over the 24 hours of this day on this thread pool what was happening. So 12, 13 threads were active in that period, unique threads, and, and uh, 17 were here. Now, this is a great summary because if you know the limit on your thread pools you can see whether you're going to hit that limit and whether you can take advantage of moving these peaks to earlier in the day in this case is a development environment obviously development is busy during business hours so it makes sense that it would look like this but if i wanted to and if i was in a business i could move these peaks to the troughs if i want to take advantage of of the capacity i have in this implementation vice section We'll go through what you need to consider before enabling this feature in your business and what you need to know to set it up. As I mentioned in the demonstration, to use this feature, you must ensure the batch snapshots are populated as this feature relies on that data and those tables. If you do not do this, then it will not appear. It will appear blank. Ensure you run the batch job and batch thread and leak snapshot jobs regularly to keep the snapshots up to date. Apart from the online help, for additional information about this batch and links dashboard, see the inline help on each zone. Additionally, you can access the batch best practices at the documentation identifying number shown here, which is available from Oracle support for additional advice. This concludes this presentation. Thank you for watching.